I love it. I am prepared, and we will start off in the AFC North. We're going to fire in with my Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I've been a fan of the Steelers my entire life. Uh, I didn't really have much of an option. You know, my, when I was really, really little, my dad has always been a fan of the Steelers. His dad was always a fan of the Steelers for whatever reason. We are not from that part of the country. I think it had to do uh, with, you know, the way that they played back in the 60s, 70s, whatever. But uh, but they don't play like that now, really. So there's yeah. a lot that needs to be fixed with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Their needs, yeah. they went 12-4 and four last year. They won the division. They were a little fraudulent. Schedule helped out a little bit. But yeah. went 12-4, and four, went 1-4 and four down the stretch, and then got blown out in the playoff game at home against the Brownies, which was just uh, a complete abomination. But we won't talk about that too much. Uh, their needs <laughs> are an a, they need a center, they need a tight end, they need cornerback, they need running back, they need edge help. And they need a quarterback. Yeah, really, really. And they um, need a quarterback, yeah. I mean, Dwayne <laughs> so, Haskins isn't the future? I don't understand. I'm very confused. I hope, I hope to God Dwayne Haskins is the future. <laughs> <laughs> so here is, here's what they ended up doing. In round one, they got running back Najee Harris out of Alabama. Round two, tight end Pat Fryermuth out of Penn State. Round three, they got a center, Kendrick Green, out of Illinois. Uh, so far, first three picks, okay. Like, I, I think there were more things that you could have done uh, rather than take a running back in the first round. Obviously, if you followed this show for any amount of time, you know that we are not fans of taking running backs in the first round, especially when you need a lot of offensive line help. Pat Fryermuth, right. that's okay. That's a, a decent value pick. Kendrick Green, the center out of Illinois, super athletic. I think this was a really, really good pick. Uh, offensive tackle Dan Moore Jr. out of Texas A&M in the fourth round. Linebacker Buddy Johnson out of Texas A&M in the fourth round as well, just about 12 picks later. Then you get into round five, and you've got defensive interior lineman Isaiah Loudermilk out of Wisconsin, edge rusher Quincy Roche out of Miami, Florida, safety Trey Norwood out of Oklahoma in the seventh round, and punter Presley Harvin the third out of Georgia Tech. Uh, I love the punter pick. Uh, because Presley Harvin was <laughs> awesome to watch. Like, he can hit yeah. bombs. So, I, I like, you know, it, I'm not a huge fan of this draft. I don't think that they really hit on all of the things that they needed. But, you know, the players that they got, I think, are going to be okay. I just, I don't know how what they did really fixes their issues right now. Uh, Kyle, Ooh, jump in yeah. and tell me, tell me your thoughts here. Yeah, so I'm with you. I like the players. Look, Najee Harris, he looks like Derrick Henry Jr. He's an absolute beast, and there's no doubt Pittsburgh needs help in their running game. The problem with the running game last year, though, even though James Conner is about as explosive as a snail and, and they needed to move on from him and there was nothing useful about having him in the backfield whatsoever. I know he's a great story and all that, but he was just sluggish. And trust me, he's been on my he's been a keeper because I got drafted him really late during the Le'Veon Bell year. So I'm still getting him in my keeper league in like the ninth round. And I just hate that James Conner is on my team. So uh, it's an upgrade. But the problem was not the running backs. Their problem was their offensive line was probably the worst in football. That's why, look, everyone bagged on this offense. Oh, they're doing these two and a half second passes, these quick passes. That's because they had to. They didn't have a choice. Ben had no time to drop back. So really, even though I like the players, to me, their biggest need by far and away wasn't even close was that offensive line. They should have been doing nothing but drafting and trading and drafting and trading for offensive line. And before, I mean, they still have Benny Snell, who they just took, what, in the second, third round yep. last year. Yeah. So going and taking the running back, even though I love the player, I think he's a fantastic player. I love watching him play, and he's certainly going to help. Like, he'll be able to break some tackles when that line's not making any holes, and he'll be able to make – something happened but for me they just didn't really address the needs they really needed to address so i'm not a huge fan of this draft although i do love a few of the players and i love it when punters are drafted always punters and kickers <laughs> drafted always makes me happy i don't know why uh it just makes me laugh and it's just kind of goofy but uh yeah they, they sort of missed the mark for me offensive line would have been where i headed if i was running this team do love Najee harris though i really do like the player yeah, I'm the same here. As I love Najee as well. He's the only Alabama player I've liked in the last decade. Um, but but I, I think he's going to be fun. The problem is, is how fun is he going to be until they can fix this line? That's not their problem. If they had a mobile running quarterback that could help uh, keep the defense a little bit uh, honest. Or, or move the pocket as well. or anything. Yeah. What you're talking about, you've yeah. got an absolute statue and a terrible offensive line. Those are the two worst things you can give 
a good explosive running back right there. That doesn't help them at all. Any threat of a run would be better than nothing. Um, and, and they just don't have it. And and so I just didn't understand. I just don't get it. You look at Jacksonville, who's not a very good football team, and they take a nobody and turn them into a thousand yard rusher. It, right. I don't I don't get why you're using this kind of capital on on running backs. It doesn't make sense. I don't like their draft. I don't think they did well. I think this team, which has done unbelievable, they're probably one of the most stable franchises in all the NFL. Listen, at some point in time, the foundation cracks and it all starts falling apart. And, and I think, I think the Steelers are looking at DFL in this division right now going into this year. I really do. I know Tomlin's it's, it's never possible. finished less with a losing record. Well, guess what? He's got an extra game that he gets to lose at the end of the season now. Okay. And that schedule is not going to work out as easy as it did last year. So. No, you're, you're hundred percent right about that. I, the, they did get a lot of value on Quincy Roche out of Miami. Trey Norwood, I love him as a player. Uh, Isaiah Laddermilk out of Wisconsin. Chris, you and I have watched him multiple times. I, only two picks were offensive linemen. You know, Kendrick Green, you know, listed as a center. He, he can play guard as well. Like, he, you can move him around some. I just, out of all of these picks that they took, only two offensive linemen. And, and that's where it really no gets to value that you're getting in the fifth and sixth round. The value yeah. in the fifth and sixth round are all just bites at the apple. That is literally just slinging spaghetti up against the wall and hoping it sticks. That's, I, will, yeah. I will guarantee that's, that's you. That's not value. I will guarantee that's, you that Quincy Roche hope. will play. Like, I will guarantee oh, that's, that. Hang on. That, that, hey, would, he, would he play in Cleveland? Would he, <laughs> would he play in Dallas? Would he play in Minnesota? Like, these aren't, like, unbelievable franchises here, but these are good teams, not terrible teams. He's going to play there because the people in front of him are dog shit. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. That doesn't <laughs> mean he's up. good. Yeah. That's, a, that's a valid point. Like, I, I think he'll be able to yeah. play behind T.J. Watt and, and uh, Alex Highsmith and, and those guys. Um, you know, Bud Dupree being gone, like, that's obviously – it's something that you got to figure out. Uh, Trey Norwood is going to come in and and shore up hopefully that safety spot. But these are seventh round guys, like you know, six seventh round. Uh, who knows? Like I, if you're if you're counting on six and seventh round guys starting for your team, yeah, you've it's got a problem. Major, you've got, major you've got, issues. I think, I think it's I think it's you've more got yeah. your problems. But, exactly. Yeah, it's it's a bit of an issue. It's definitely a bit of an issue. So I uh, yeah. I like the guys. Don't like the draft. Uh, I'll say that yeah. much. Um, yeah. Let's move on. And we're going to go right across the way to one of the rivals. Like I feel like this is the most hateful division in in all it of is. the NFL. Like they yeah, they all really, hate really each other. Is. Uh, yeah, that would they be all hate each other except for <laughs> yes. the poor Bengals. Who hates the Bengals? It's like uh, come on. I, don't, I, don't I haven't hate hated the Bengals, the Bengals since Boomer Esiason in like '91 or something like that. That's a, when when Burfick was playing for him. At, everybody hated him, but. Well, that's true. Well, yeah, that was a yeah. different scenario, though. <laughs> yeah, Agreed. yeah, yeah, that's true. So the that's ball- true. And it actually turns out he did the right thing, hitting that piece of crap Antonio Brown a few times. He actually deserved <laughs> it. So it was kind of a nice thing that it happened to him. You know, God. couldn't have happened to a worse guy. So there you go. The Baltimore Ravens went 11-5 and five last year in <laughs> Lamar Jackson's third season. Uh, they needed wide receiver help, edge help, offensive tackle, and safety help. And what they ended up rolling with, uh, I... I I typically always like Baltimore's drafts, and and I do again this year. Like, they always seem to pick the right guy at the right spot. First round, wide receiver Rashad Bateman out of Minnesota. And then, of course, they traded Orlando Brown Jr. to the Chiefs and were able to pick up another first rounder. They get Odafe Owe out of Penn State, edge rusher, guard Ben Cleveland in the third round out of Georgia, cornerback Brandon Stevens out of SMU in the third round. Round four, another wide receiver, Tylen Wallace, who... The season before, Man. if you had told me that he was going to go fourth round, I would have said you were That's nuts. Right. I mean, he is an he, absolute yeah, this, stud. This is just what happens in this draft because the wide receivers were just so rich. Just so yeah. rich. Then you also have yeah. in, fifth, in the fifth round, a cornerback Sean Wade out of Ohio State. He is a guy that was projected first or second round until he played out of position for the entire 2020 season when they moved him to the outside and had him man up on guys. He is... He's an inside defensive back. That's what yep. he's always been. Right. So, uh, right. But you get him in the fifth round now. You get edge rusher Dalen Hayes out of Notre Dame. And then you get tight end Ben Mason out of Michigan. Uh, all three of those last ones in the fifth round. I freaking love this draft. Like, the Baltimore, every year, it feels like they are the smartest team on the block when it comes to the draft and how to get value for those picks. And they, they hit this one out of the park, I think. 
Yeah, I thought they did a really good job. Now, the one concern is who's going to replace Orlando Brown. I, I'm not exactly sure there. The good news for them is, I mean, what is it going to be? Uh, did, didn't they draft a kid, Tyree Phillips or something like that? Maybe it's him. So they, they, they missed that. You have two first-round picks late in the first round. Get yourself a tackle. Get yourself somebody. Now, the good news is you have Lamar Jackson, who even if you aren't blocking, he's going to outrun every single player on the defense. So they probably feel like, you know, uh, we, we have a little bit of leeway here. I feel bad for the wide receivers. I think they're great players. I like who they picked. I feel bad for them because Lamar Jackson's not going to be throwing them the ball properly. So they're going to have really low numbers. You know, you're probably going to see 35 or 40 catches out of these guys and, you know, 412 yards and three touchdowns. And they probably their second contract's not going to look beautiful because they have a guy who's electric, fun to watch, uh, love everything about Lamar Jackson except for the fact that he cannot throw a pass. He can't. <laughs> He does no touch or finesse on the ball whatsoever. Um, it's just hard to watch. I mean, you, you saw it with them last year. You, you have a guy like Brady. When they're blitzing the crap and taking those run lanes away from Lamar Jackson, he can't adjust and read on the opposite side of the field and put the ball where it needs to go. That's just not the type of player he is. So even though I love these wide receivers, everything I see about Bateman makes me think he's an absolute stud. Tylen Wallace as well. I just wonder how utilized are they actually going to be because, uh, again, we're talking about a run first, run second, run third offense, and maybe you get the occasional pass to Mark Andrews. Uh, I like the Ben Cleveland pick. They obviously needed to bolster that line. Of course, we know what they do with linebackers, so always probably going to have this massive career because that's what Baltimore does. They turn them into studs. Overall, good players. I like the draft. Wish they would have addressed that offensive tackle situation. It will be interesting to see there. And overall, I just feel bad for the wide receivers. That's how I came out feeling uh, from this draft. <laughs> I can't, I can't, we just can't disagree even more. Like, I, I love Lamar. I think Lamar can throw. Uh, name a receiver that's been worth a shit in that offense that's come that's over there. Fair. Hollywood Brown has been a bust. He's just not great. I don't uh, he's think he's a number one guy. Quality talent. Like I, I, think, what? I, I don't think he's a number one guy. I think I think he can't well, okay. be useful. But, uh, they, hang but, on. If you're not a number one guy, you can't be a first-round draft pick wide receiver if you're not a number one guy. If you're going to be Julian Edelman, Julian Edelman's coming the sixth and seventh round. Okay, Gary? That's Not a, in the okay, first. Right. That's, right? that's a good point. So, that's, a good point. so that's called bust. That is a good point. That's called bust. All right. Uh, I I like Rashad Bateman. My problem is, and this isn't a problem. I just assume they like Bateman because of Bateman's size. Because I think yeah. there are two receivers that really three receivers that went behind him. Now they're all considerably smaller than him. Um, in in Elijah Moore, uh, Rondell yeah. Moore, and then Terrace Marshall. I like all better than than Bateman. But if they want a big receiver and not another small, fast guy like Hollywood, then it makes sense. And I think Lamar is going to look much better if Bateman can get open. All right. Yeah. So is Lamar the kind of guy that can throw the football through a keyhole? No, but he's not awful. His accuracy is not nearly as bad as people make it out to be. His receivers aren't getting open. Hell, they gave receiving snaps and passes to Des Bryant Des last Bryant. year. Yeah. Are we are we kidding ourselves to think this receiving core is worth a shit at all? They're not right. good. That is not on Lamar. The reason he dumps the ball off to his tight end is because that's the only guy that can catch the football. If Bateman's good... I think we're going to be fine. I think this offense is going to open up and we're going to see a different side of it. You can't make chicken salad with chicken shit. All right. He <laughs> runs the football because he has no one to throw the ball to. Well, he's got Sammy Watkins now. He's He's got well, Hollywood Sammy Brown. Sammy Watkins hasn't been good since the day he stepped on the field. Miles since Boykin. Time, he was the first receiver taken in that draft. That was the first time I ever said, bust. <laughs> bust, they made a mistake. Absolutely but, yes. made a mistake in that it's, draft. By the way, what you were talking about with Lamar uh, not being able to throw it through a keyhole, neither can Josh Allen. But it no, all changes when you got somebody like because Stephon Diggs. Guys that can get open. Yeah. yeah. And, got, I, and this yeah. is the reason that I would have liked a guy like Elijah Moore. I saw Elijah Moore track, do exactly what uh, uh, Stephon Diggs does. He tracks deep balls better than any receiver in the league uh, uh, Diggs does. Elijah Moore does the exact same thing. Throw the ball deep and he will go and get it. He will try. You don't have to throw it to him. He will find the football. He will track it down. He will catch it. This is what I liked about him. I do think they're a little gun shy and they want some size at the wide receiver position. That makes sense um, because they've got a first round pick in, in Hollywood invested and it hasn't panned out. Um, I hope Bateman's good. I would like this offense to be fun because I like Lamar. I'm, I'm emotionally invested yeah. in Lamar. I think he's far better than people give him credit for. 
the best quarterback in the world, Tom Brady, last year had unbelievable numbers. Two years ago, his last year in 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 in, in New England, his numbers were terrible. Look at his True. receiving core at one place. Look at him in another. Yeah. If you put Lamar on one of these better teams with a good receiver, I'm not asking for four or five, one good receiver, it totally changes everything. I, I do right. agree with that. By the way, Kyle, the, uh, the tackle position, uh, it's shored up a little bit by Alejandro Villanueva signing there. Yeah, they did, oh, they okay. did right. sign him from the Steelers. Yep. Uh, yeah. uh, he's he's not he's not uh, Orlando by any Orlando. means. No, no, not even close. So but everyone also, loves Andrew. He's going to be in plenty of commercials, and everyone loves oh, him, yes. and the fans will love him. So that's always a nice thing to add to your team, I suppose. It right. it most certainly is. And with that, we will head over to Chris's team, and that would be the Cleveland Browns. And uh, you know, went eleven and five last year. Really successful season, I do believe. I, I think it's safe to say that. Uh, what maybe best year in. I mean, a decade at least. Franchise what, history no, since no, 1965. No. Oh, it, it's the it's the best year since John Elway's drive. That's yeah, 86. Crazy. Since, the, since the 86 team. So we're course. talking three days. Ernest Biner. We're talking a long, long yeah. time. Uh, yeah. They they needed some help, but for the most part, it's a pretty good roster already. Like they they've got a, yeah. they got a bunch of good dudes. Uh, this front yeah. office knows what they're doing. Uh, the needs you could say that they might need was edge help, uh, linebacker help, wide receiver, and defensive tackle. Um, here is what they ended up doing. You got cornerback Greg Newsom out of Northwestern, who is an absolute stud in the first round. Linebacker mm-hmm. Jeremiah Awasu oh. Koromoa out of Notre Dame in the second round. He steel. dropped Be hard. Steel, my heart. Yeah. Oh. What a uh, steal. What a steal. <laughs> round three, Anthony Schwartz out of Auburn, who can absolutely fly. He's a uh, track guy. Planet. Yep. Uh, offensive tackle James Hudson out of Cincinnati. I think that was a fantastic pick in the fourth round. Tommy Togei. Uh, out of Ohio State in the fourth round, Tony Fields, linebacker slash safety out of West Virginia, who is awesome. Uh, he is the the perfect meld to go against like some of these spread offenses now. Uh, safety Richard LeCount out of Georgia in the fifth round, who uh, I think that was an absolute steal as well. And then Demetric Felton, running back out of UCLA in the late sixth, uh, pick 211. Uh, they, I mean, it, it, this was... Absolutely, uh, you know we're we're not giving letter grades, but this was an A plus to me. This they yeah. hit everything that they needed to hit. They brought in fantastic players. They, I mean, everything about this was good. Yeah, I agree, and it's going to be contrary to what I said because Chris is not going to hate this because this was definitely the best draft in this division. They absolutely needed another corner outside of Greedy Williams over there, and you saw the team struggle when they had injuries in that secondary last year. You they couldn't stop the pass, and that's their biggest. Two problems are they play in a cold weather city and their quarterback cannot play in cold weather. I look, ba- I love Baker Mayfield's personality. I love the commercials. I love all that. But the dude comes up small in cold weather games. It was a guaranteed under every single time. There, there were, and if you remember, poor Cleveland, they had what four straight weeks where they were playing in a damn tsunami. Either in last snow year. or a tsunami, four weeks in a row. Yes, it was it was unbearable to watch. Oh, it's so it, hard. It really was. And, look, that's going to happen sometimes, but, you know, you look at the great ones. You look at the Aaron Rodgers and the Bradys. They can get it done in those situations, and he just really struggles with it. I mean, there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He struggles against it. But the rest of that roster is absolutely loaded. The best one-two running back combo in the league, a terrific offensive line. Of course, the best pass rusher in the NFL in Miles Garrett. Love that they added Greg Newsom in the first round. I think that's a huge upgrade to their secondary. Oh, sorry, I'm – don't know why there's noise playing through my headphones here. <laughs> well, we can't hear it. But uh, yeah, you're all good. <laughs> okay, good. You guys can't hear it. Fantastic. Because all of a sudden it just started going wild on me here. I have no idea what's going on here. Uh, the Owosu Oromo, and I know I'm butchering that name, but that's yeah, a Owosu, okay. Just Owosu okay. Komor. Yeah, J-O-K. J-O-K. Okay. I, I thought he was the best <laughs> linebacker in the draft. I thought in the he was, draft. And th- in the draft. I thought he was better than Micah Parsons. And then, you know, day two started, and I saw he was still there. I thought he would be the first player off the board to Jacksonville in the second round, and he wasn't, and he goes all the way to Cleveland. Cleveland absolutely knocked it out of the park here. Terrific draft. Uh, They just need themselves a cold-weather quarterback. That's it. So I think they're going to be fine at quarterback. I'm not – and listen, I don't blow Baker, okay? All right, I don't don't blow smoke. I I have – I have criticized him appropriately, I believe, all right? I don't live in this fictitious world where I think he's the end-all, be-all. I do think he progressed last year and got substantially better. His first offensive coach was Hugh Jackson. His second offensive coach was Freddie Kitchens. Kitchens. His third is Kevin Stefanski. The the gap, the, the, the tool to measure 
the separation between Stefanski and Freddie Kitchens has not been created. Okay. It <laughs> don't have a way to quantify how to separate these two. There's not a lingo that has been, there's not words in the English language made to, to, to just to discriminate those two. All right. And so by the end of last year, you got to take all those. It, that's not just cold weather. When you're playing in a monsoon and you're playing in a blizzard, you, like, like playing in cold frigid weather, but not a blizzard is different than playing in a blizzard. Okay. Yeah. And those games so, were, they were, and, and it was four in a row at some point yeah. in time, you just throw your hands up and say, we're going out here and we just don't want to get hurt because we think we're going to make yeah. the playoffs no matter what. Um, so I'm not going to hold those things against him. I do believe that he progressively got better. Remember he also lost his best offensive receiver. Of course. Like early in the season week one, week two, and they're getting Odell back. I, I think this is going to change things. I think this offense is going to be unbelievable. I think Baker's going to be fine. Get to the draft. This is why the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did so well. I think the Cleveland Browns, with the picks they had, did better than every team in the draft. This is not a homer pick. I truly honestly believe that. And it's because they went into the draft with no great need. They didn't have to say, we have to fill a hole here. They were really, truly able to say, this is the best person on the board. Why would we not take them and make our team better? This is the best guy on the board. Why would we not take them and make our team better? And they did it over and over and over again. And I just think this team's really good. So I've talked about Miles Garrett is a fraction of a second away from having 30 sacks last year. I'm talking just right. an obscene number. All right. If the secondary can just cover guys, I don't need the secondary to make interceptions. I don't need them to 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 knock balls down. I don't need them to do anything other than make the quarterback hold the football just a fraction of a second longer than they are now. And Miles Garrett is going to eat them. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> That's it. Eat them alive, dead. And it's true. Like the second year was just hurt last year. That was the big problem. Yes, I mean, Denzel yeah. Ward and Greedy Williams are terrific corner. Of course, they got rid of a couple of safeties. And we don't know what them. Greedy's going to be yet because he never right. really played the whole year. But right. Denzel when he Ward does, he's very fight. effective. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, yeah. when Greedy Williams plays, he's a fade for me. When I have a receiver over Greedy Williams, he gave up something like 0.16 fantasy points per route ran against. Uh, it was tough, to, but just once those injuries piled up, that secondary was so, so bad. You, you I mean, add Newsom, and Newsom's had some injury issues, but you add Newsom into the mix to where now you can just rotate guys. The thing I like about this is, is you stay healthy because you don't have to play all the snaps all the time now. Right. Is now right. instead of playing every defensive snap, you're going to play 60% or 70% of the defensive snaps. And those 30% you're not playing helps you not get hurt helps rest your body, helps save your body. I, I love what they're doing in Cleveland on the defensive side of the ball. Um, I, I, I want to attack your, your Jadavion Clowney pick just one time. Everybody who's listened mm -hmm. to Winning Cures Everything knows this. They've heard me say this before. You don't know how to watch football, and you don't know how to watch defensive line, guys. Everyone just works under the impression that if you're not getting sacks as, a, as an edge rusher or a defensive edge guy, then you're worthless. But no, sure. he is one of the best run-stopping defensive linemen in all of football. When he was in college, he didn't get a lot of sacks. That famous hit he had was on a running back, not a yep. quarterback, okay? This guy attacks running backs. He stops the run. Cleveland last year got ran on like their defense was Swiss damn cheese, okay? Yep. He yep. is going to plug the hole and stop the run. That's what we need him to do, by the way. We don't need him getting 12 sacks. I don't need him getting one sack. I got a monster on the other side to do that. Yeah, we just need him to play 12 games, maybe. That's I, mean, I do need him to available. play 12 games. I that, do need that's him to the do real that. knock on him. The guy holds out, acts like he's God's gift, and he's the savior, yeah. and then the dude can't play more than four games. Like, come on, get real here, man. Get on but the field. But I think a lot of media people give him crap because they don't. They just look at sack numbers for his mm -hmm. position, and they think that's the only way to grade those guys. Man, some of the, the reason he's getting, he's super valuable to teams is, is he helped stop the run for the Titans last year. And, and he's actually pretty good in coverage. You can, you, you can zone blitz with him and drop him back. Yeah, and he's – Crazy to make plays he's and, super and fast. To make plays in the passing game as well. So he's there, there big are some. And he's uh, fast. No, he, he yeah. has value. He's just not a pass rusher. Those are two different yeah. skills. I like sure. having a Agreed. guy that can stop the run. I tend like to. Uh, I tend to agree with you. I think that. Uh, I think they killed it. 
I mean, I think they absolutely mm-hmm. killed it. So we'll uh, we'll move on from there, and we will jump into the Cincinnati Bengals, who is uh, another one of Chris's teams, if only for the fact that his boy Joe Burrow is the quarterback there. Um, and this is the Bayou. This is the new Bayou Bengals, baby. It, it kind of seems like it, doesn't it? <laughs> kind of seems like it. it. They um they were four eleven and one last year, and they were in some super tight games. Defense couldn't stop anybody. Bro, you know, had to had to create some playmakers and whatnot. But they, I mean, they quickly got the offense going. You know, T. Higgins showed up. They they figured some things out on that offense, and I think it's just a, another step in the right direction. Hopefully, he comes back. You know, fully healthy. All reports are he's perfectly fine. But we shall see. They needed tackle. Yeah. They needed wide receiver. They needed guard. They needed tight end. They needed defensive tackle. So basically, yeah. line help. They needed a Everything bunch of line across help. the front. Six. Yes. Yes. On, on offense and defense, really. Um, yeah. And so, with that, they went into this draft, and at pick number five, they took wide receiver Jamar Chase, who Chris and I have talked about this before. If this is your first time watching us, 32% of Burrow's sacks last year were covered sacks. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. they, he had wide receivers that could not get open. Chase is a wide receiver that can get open. I think that's going to help out a few things. He'll be able to get the ball out a little bit quicker. In round two, they did address that tackle situation. They got Jackson Carmen out of Clemson. Round three, Joseph Fasai out of Texas, edge rusher. In round four, another edge rusher, Cameron Sample out of Tulane. Defensive interior lineman Tyler Shelvin in the fourth round out of LSU. He is a one of those old school kind of nose tackle, uh, big just big man body, takes, takes up the a run. lot of space. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they got tackled Deontay Smith out of East Carolina in the fourth round. Then we move to the fifth round. They draft a kicker. Evan McPherson out of Florida, <laughs> which I'm not that upset about. Uh, his his coach was actually a former Bengal who still has ties to the organization. Evan McPherson could bomb him. Like, he's he's a fantastic kicker. So, yeah. I, uh, you know, maybe a little early for me, but uh, whatever. And then yeah. once you get into round six and seven, this is where you take flyers on guys. Center Trey Hill out of Georgia, running back Chris Evans out of uh, Michigan, and edge rusher Wyatt Hubert out of Kansas State. Uh Again, you know, I don't have a lot of faith in the Bengals' front office, but this was not a bad draft for what they they needed to accomplish. They they hit some needs and they got some value with some of these guys. I I like what they did. Yeah, I do too. And look, there's no secret they were dropping Joe Burrow back 55 times a game last year, which is absolutely crazy to do to a young rookie quarterback, and that's why he got his leg knocked off. Yes. So at five, it was the real debate was: Are they going to take Panay Sewell here, which would have made total sense? or take Jamar Chase to replace the corpse of A.J. Green, whom they, gratefully for all Bengals fans, shipped off to Arizona. I love this draft. I think they nailed it on the head. They took the best player available. You take a Jamar Chase, especially a guy with such a rapport with your young quarterback. I absolutely love what they did there, and then they instantly get back in the second round, third round, fourth round, and start addressing those needs. I mean, their next one, two, three, four, five picks were offensive or defensive linemen, which is exactly what they needed to do. So I really think the Bengals are probably the second. This is a pretty good division for draft outside of the Steelers. Uh, I, the Bengals, for me, were right up there with Cleveland. I love what both teams did. Uh, good on the Bengals. They're going to be a little bit better this year. And I, just, I too, like Joe Burrow quite a bit. I, you know, I'm not the biggest SEC fan, or I don't really care all <laughs> that much about college football. It's too much for me. I don't know how the hell but you guys do he's, he's a fun guy, though. He's a, but fun, he's a dude, fun guy. Yes. He's a talented guy. He's going Super to be likeable. very – yeah, he is. He really is likable. He can do everything. He can run. He can throw. Uh, I like everything about this draft. I think the Bengals knocked it out of the park. Yeah, I did too. For an organization that's just kind of known for cocking it up, they they didn't mm-hmm. do that. And, mm-hmm. uh, and and Gary gave the stat that that, that I would have going to give is is thirty two percent of the sacks were coverage sacks. Listen. We saw Houston last year have the worst offensive line in football. They, they, they also had the best single offensive lineman in football. Isn't that weird? Like, it is weird. Like, one off it, Penny Sewell wasn't going to fix this offensive line. He was not right. going to make up or account for 30% of Joe's sacks, all right? But one weapon like Jamar Chase could absolutely help affect a larger percentage of the sacks than, than one offensive lineman. So yeah. I, I like taking the just the the generational player. Yeah. And yeah. I also think that offensive uh, – that wide receiver room, that wide receiver room right now is probably one of the best wide receiver rooms, it especially is. at the age that all those guys are. 
in in Boyd and Higgins. <coughs> Chase. Ow, man. I mean, you're talking if those guys can stay healthy, they could play together another six years all in their prime and, and mm-hmm. be kind of elite. That's 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 pretty scary. And then you're right. They address the offensive line outside of this. Gary and I've talked about it before. Their line was so bad because they were banged up. Now the guys that they were missing aren't great. They're not pro bowlers, but the guys coming back just to be healthy next year are going to be upgrades from what actually played last year. So yeah, sure. I'm not crazy concerned about the line. It's something you want to address. I still think they're going to throw it 55 times a game, by the way. I don't think they're stopping that. I think that's the way football is going in the NFL, man. I mean, it just really – I never in my life thought I'd see a day where these Steelers would, like, have a game that they won and they would have less than 50 yards rushing. And they had, like, three games back-to-back-to-back last year where they were, like, less than 30 yards. It was, like, 29, 28, 20 – like – this is just the way modern football is played today, man. It just right. is. And Jonah Buffalo Williams is very back. similar in that route too. Buffalo, yeah, yeah. Buffalo. I never thought they would not run the football. Yeah, yeah. Um, they don't run it at, at all. The at line, all. the line for the uh, the Bengals. Jonah Williams coming back is going to be big. They signed Riley Reef to play that right tackle position uh, out of Minnesota. And say what you want about him in Minnesota, like he wasn't great, but maybe a change of scenery. Uh, uh, position change. I think he played a little guard at Minnesota, uh, but he's versatile. Like he can just move all yeah. over the place. Uh, Trey Hopkins, you know, uh, a year under his belt, looks like things may be improving for him. Um, you know, uh, we'll we'll see. I I do the, the guy in front of Reef that Reef's taking his place. That guy was that guy was just a a, a soup can. Okay, he was a nobody. <laughs> all right, I don't need him to be a Pro Bowl. I just need him yeah. to stand in front of dudes. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I like, will say I, this. They're going to miss William Jackson. They are going to miss yeah. William Jackson. Probably the most underrated corner in the entire league was a great signing by Washington. William Jackson was an absolute shutdown machine on a terrible defense. They didn't throw towards William Jackson. 0. 0.09 fantasy points per route ran against last year. One of the best corners in the entire league. They're going to miss him. So that could be one thing to worry about. The teams are going to be able to throw the ball a little bit on this team. I mean, you're not going to be able to fix how bad this defense was with one draft. That's just not going nope. to happen. And But they're going to miss William Jackson for sure. Oh, for sure. For sure. Uh, however, that could be part of the reason why Chris believes that they're going to be throwing the ball 55 times a ball game, times game to, uh, to yeah. chase Auden Tate, uh, uh, Stanley Morgan, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, like all those guys. They... Uh, it, they got, they got some dudes that are going to be getting the ball, too. So uh, we will move away from the AFC North. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.